Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover and thank you for joining me here in Kaizen Redux in which we are exploring the way to avoid the second American Civil War. But right now I've already gone ahead and played just a little bit off screen to get us to this point because as the guy does say, when you play as Hoover to avoid it, you need to have the Ghana Wagner Bill pass, which might take some time for us to do, so I'm just going to kind of jump between points here and there. But I'm going to read this that I've never actually read before, I think. The Republican nomination disagreement. The Republican Party is united in its goal to save America and preserve a liberal democracy, but as per usual, disagreement has arisen over whether a member of the party's progressive or conservative wing will be the President Curtis, VP of the U.S., who is well-renowned for his negotiating abilities amongst the politicians, giving him a moderate appeal that crosses party lines, however. Representing the more liberal wing of the party's famed businessman and Kansas Governor Alf Landon, whom favors more direct economic intervention in the economy and could win over progressive Republicans who whom recently defected to the left-leaning progressive party. While the loser will be the other's vice presidential candidate to show party solidarity, Hoover, using his little remaining political capital to back a candidate could make or break them. So, I believe that we'll probably just go ahead uh, and choose good old Curtis and let's see what happens if we get the Ghana Wagner Bill to pass. Hopefully it will, because according to this one it says, really you need to have work with either radical option to guarantee its chances. So Senator breaks ranks. Have you wondered about those please go ahead? So right now, we could pledge support. We can work, so like I said, we have to work with either radical option. Um, so without, uh, while not working with the AS, CSA or AFP guarantees failure, uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's go with SBA, I guess this time. So we have that one. So the next thing that has to happen is that when the event fires before the elections, we have to nominate Landon or Curtis for party lead. So I'll see you about right then. Curtis's health brought into question. Now, while the Republican National Convention has not yet occurred, some of the leaders of the Republican Party are fearful that they will lose the upcoming election due to the bad health of Charles Curtis. The liberal wing of the party is pushing to switch Curtis for Landon and to distance ourselves from the old guard. Meanwhile, a group of conservative Republicans are pushing both Hoover and the Republican leadership to run the president again in the upcoming election. The leadership of the Republican Party are still willing to stick with Curtis despite the health concerns, but these whispers must be addressed if he wants to become the next president. And of course, as we have seen in the guide up here, when the event fires before the election is to nominate Landon or Curtis, for the party lead, we chose Curtis already, but then concerns over Curtis's health can be raised, and if pressed, Hoover can be nominated instead. Then, just elect Hoover. So, we need expertise, we need experience, and we're going to draft Hoover. Alright everyone, so now we have the 1936 elections. If you'd like to read about that, please go ahead. But according to the guide, we need to just say, Hey, Herbert, nice vacuums, and we'll elect you. Currently we're doing the U.S. Navy. Um, so after this, now that we have riots over the 36th election, um, with Hoover's surprise victory in the 1936 election, riots have broken out across many of America's cities. I love it. Clashes between the police, the SBA, Minutemen, Klan members are all raging across the U.S. Many people are turning to the military in hopes they will be able to be, be able to restore order. The future looks bleak for America. Is there a hope? I hope there is never another year like 1936. We get national military support, which grants stability and daily paternal autocrat support. That's kind of cool. So now, to avoid it, we need to complete the left side of Hoover Street as soon as he's elected, down to and including the Hoover Raids. So, uh, let's see. I think the SBA can test election results. That's nice. Don't really care. Um, actually, do we get to do stuff now since technically... Ooh, four more years. Yeah, we technically we do. Okay. So, usually I just go ahead and do the U.S. Navy, but who cares? So, we're just going to go ahead and start the four more years. And I'm going to actually read through these because I've never done this before. Despite the odds, and thanks to the Republican and Democratic House members who backed him, Hoover will begin his third term as president of the good old U.S. of A. Taking victory from the jaws of defeat, Hoover now governs the nation so angered by his victory that it is a powder keg ready to blow. Kaboom. One little mistake could spill the end of the union. This focus will eventually be auto-completed and bypass. We'll hopefully get the political power and market liberalism. We do not, which sucks. Uh, oh, uh, okay, now we do. Yay! And today we are scrounging for a meal. Um, so now it does say, go down and include the Hoover Raids. So, well, I guess we'd go down this side. Because I know, okay, the Tempest recording, uh, Dune Hammer Gaming is also doing the exact same thing. And someone else recommended I do it as well. So I figured, why not do it? So, now um, let's see. As soon as elected it down, to include the Hoover Raids. Cool. That side. Today we are scrounging for a meal. Hoover's previous two terms as president saw a period of severe dust storms that greatly damaged local wildlife and farmlands of America's prairies. While the dust storms have slowed, much of the devastation caused by these storms still remains. Thousands of migrant workers move across the country looking for work. The tension between these migrants and workers, uh, uh, local workers, have led to massive fights along with various unions attempting to push these workers out of their states. Followed up, we are living in a shanty with Hoovervilles. Homelessness was present before the Great Depression. It was a common sight before 1925. However, most large cities built municipal 
lodging houses for the homeless. But the department or the depression exponentially increased demand. The homeless clustered in shanty towns close to free soup kitchens. While this trend didn't start under Hoover, his victory in 28 and the collapse of the market that same year, the opposition began to call these expanded settlements Hoover'svilles. Hoover's New Direction. Herbert Hoover announced to the nation engulfed in the chaos that he's taken his own administration in a new direction. Hoping that with the help of both the Congress and the local governments in solving the crisis, Hoover's hoping that this new direction will save the U.S. of A. from a total collapse. This is President Hoover, and you're listening to Public Radio Announcement. Very cool. So, we're just going to go down the left side as fast as possible, and we have to authorize the raids. So, this is just going to some beer, but the... Ooh, Liberia declares independence. If we want to know about that, please go ahead. We have a little choice, but let it be. I don't really care. The Dust Bowl is perhaps the worst drought in Amer North America in a thousand years. It has been plaguing this plain states for nearly seven years, forcing thousands of families to flee the various states across the region. However, in recent days, the Dust Bowl has intensified across these plain states and now many around the country. I called upon Hoover to act to solve this crisis. I've done everything I can already. Oh, that sucks. That's pretty bad, but that's all right. You made us what we are today. Tensions across the nation are already high enough, but with Hoover's nomination and subsequent victory on the 36th Republican ticket, many across the nation are angry, wishing their preferred candidate had won the election. Many of these individuals <clears throat> have begun protesting the election results, and the most violent of these individuals have begun assaulting and burning buildings. The police are barely able to handle clashes between the ODP and the SBA members, but with AFP also in the mix, and massively upset with the loss of Long, things have spun out of control. Washington, D.C. looks more like a battleground every single day, and many within the government are feeling as if this is a problem that the police cannot handle by Hoover Bills. Over Hoover's past two terms, the so-called Hoover Bills have expanded across the country. Little the Hoover administration has done has ameliorated the problem, and it seems that these shanty towns are permanent presence. Even worse, due to the riots across the country, criminal activity in these Hoover Bills has skyrocketed. How can we solve the problem? And we'd like to thank you, Herb. Hoover was originally praised for the government works that he has implemented, or he has implemented. But as time went on, unemployment continued rising. While we seem to finally be turning the corner in 36, the events of the Black Monday saw the economic situation in America worsen even more. Hoover was criticized for almost every program he proposed in that time. His public works project, designed to create jobs, have been characterized as wasteful government spending. His efforts to promote local relief programs, rather than asking Congress to create nationwide relief programs, has been viewed as a callous disregard for the unemployed. It is what it is, and riots and lawlessness. Now, with the media backlash to Hoover's victory subsiding, we have begun to see mass demonstrations across the U.S. Such demonstrations have inevitably led to complete anarchy in the Red Belt, Bible Belt, and Wheat Belt, because we love our belts here in America, regions that have descended into a new era of lawlessness. It seems that this year will be one that shakes America to its very foundations. It's a hard not life. Oh, baby, yes it is. Fighting in Indiana. Ooh, my state? Cool, let's beat each other up. Hoover's legacy. President Hoover won a massive victory in 28, running, running a return to normalcy campaign in the aftermath of the Wilson and Palmer administrations in 1932. Hoover barely won a victory, but with the assistance of House and a split vote between beat the Democrat candidate by the slimmest of margins. This Pyrrhic victory combined the failure of his administration to deal with the crisis at home, has destroyed any credibility he had before becoming president. Can he save this ship of state from sinking? Eh, maybe. Who needed stability? It's only minus 80%, that's all. Now is now is prosperity around the corner? With the inauguration of Herbert Hoover on January 20th, 1936, he has begun the third term as president overseeing a nation in panic, with riots everywhere and a state of lawlessness across the country. Many close to the president and the nation as a whole seem, see him as both defeated and pessimistic. However, Hoover's VP Knox has gone after the radicals across the nation, slamming them as a danger to the American economy by wishing to tax away capital, encouraging waste, and throttling America's entrepreneurial spirit. And of course, this book is will auto bypass, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and back to U.S. Navy, because why not? Presidential inauguration. Hubert Hoover was sworn in again as the president of the good old U.S. of A. today. President Hoover's inauguration speech called for a calm in these difficulty of times, or difficult times, and how we must not compromise our democratic values with radicals left or right. Hoover is quoted as saying, America is a great social and economic experiment, noble motive and far-reaching in purpose. America is one nation indivisible. Mission, I quickly. So now, since we've just elected him, to avoid it, of course, we still need to go down the left side of his little path down here, which is over here. Very nice. I've already read this earlier, right, like right before we faded in, faded out. So we'll go choose that one. And it takes a little less than one day, which is great. So now we must rush down the left side. As much as we want to embrace Knox's economics, we must be working with the Democrats. While many cannot remember a time of Democrats and Republicans working together, it has happened before, and the time has once again come to work with their traditional rivals. Otherwise, both of our parties could be destroyed by a sea of radical far-left and far-right populists, along with those socialists in those in that Don Don Midwest. And also, like I said earlier, uh, I was inspired to do this campaign because of Dune Hammer Gaming. You know what? I decided, you know what? If you're still watching this, first of all, thank you. You should pause this video, go in the description of this video, 
the first link in the description will be Dune's first video in his campaign, and I want you to tell him a message. I want you to tell him big love from Mr. Mocha Lover. So, I recommend doing that because I want to, no matter what, when you watch this video, I want to see people saying big love to Dune Hammer Gaming from me um, throughout the rest of the year, 2021, or whenever, if you're watching this in 2022, also in that year and beyond. Cool. So, now that we've done this left side here, we need to go down to do Hoover's Raids, but a new hope for Alaska. Um, I think I've already done this before, so we are loyal to America now and forever. So, Alaska, please, not today. Not today. So, as soon as we do that, we can do the Hoover Raids and authorize them and expand the FBI. Cool. Appoint new judges. With the Hoover administration working more closely with the conservative Democrats, many within the liberal wing of the Republican Party have been calling out Hoover's inaction and perceived traitor status. Some of the further left members of the liberal wing have even gone so far as to join the Progressive Party. Openings on the Supreme Court along with the lower courts. That's given Hoover the ability to mend fences with the liberals of this party. However, many of the Democrats have been, that have been working with the Republicans have been pushing for the candidates for the Supreme Court along with the lower courts. Oh boy. Um, also, it is 1937, my friends. We could do, keep doing stuff, but I want to get some more construction. Because we technically still... Well, earlier we did. We had some consumer goods we could use. But we no longer have consumer goods. Kind of sucks. But that's all right. We got to appoint new judges, and we got to do the raids as fast as possible. Because you know me, we love raiding. Well, raiding things. But the Hoover raids. There is a great amount of urgency in the calls to crush these insurgencies as harshly as possible. The director of the FBI, John Edgar Hoover, has suggested to President Hoover that the best way to solve the crisis of these riots is to begin targeting their organizers along with the suppliers. Many of the more liberal members of Hoover's cabinet fear emboldening the FBI director, which could cause the same repression of civil liberties seen during the Wilson and Palmer administrations. If his name, his, if his last name is Hoover, and our first last name, is, our last name is Hoover, we, we just bunch of Hoover lovers, <laughs> like a Mr. Mocha lover. But we're just Hoover lovers. Cool. And the Kingdom of Finance to join the Reichs Pact. It's gonna be weird. This is very weird that we're actually not gonna go be going to war for the American Civil War, which I want to play as American Union State again. Actually, I'm thinking about playing as Kaiser Reich again because it's been a long time since I played that mod. But I think I want to try it out again sometime. But not today. Someday. Russia announces her ambitions. I know some people want me to play more Russia, uh, like Savinkov Russia. I think that'd be kind of cool actually to play Savinkov's Russia, but we'll see. We'll get there eventually. We definitely need more guns, though. Holy crap. Uh, the judges. And then the Hoover Raids. Probably followed up with what? Reassuring the establishment? Let's do dealing with the riots. That's probably a good thing to do. Ever since Hoover's victory in 36, riots have broken out across the country. With local police no longer able to handle the crisis, members of Hoover's cabinet, such as Douglas MacArthur, have advised Hoover, Hoover to send the military in to deal with these riots. Others, such as Henry Ford, have suggested less radical solutions, sim such as simply using the nation na National Guards of each state to break up the riots. Still, other members have been told Hoover that the police will get a hold of the situation given enough time or that Hoover should focus on fixing the economy and these riots, of course, will simmer down. Once everyone has enough jobs, but what if they don't care about jobs? That's a good question. So, so now we're doing the raids. We need to authorize the raids as soon as the event happens and expand the FBI in the next event. Then in the riot event, choose anything but... Waiting for them to calm down, as that will get Hoover you know, killed off. Spoiler alert! So we gotta do something when we're dealing with these riots. Just do not wait. Because... We don't want to see this suit earlier. Actually, oh, hated president. Oh, that's really bad. Oh boy. But the Hoover raids. The Palmer raids were the largest series of radio of raids on our citizens in American history. These raids were ostensibly an attempt to crack down on leftist activists, particularly anarchists. Nearly a decade later, we are facing a much more profound crisis of rioters, clan terrorists, anarchist terrorism, and even populist paramilitary groups. Secretary of the Interior J. Edgar Hoover has asked Hoover for the same freedom. Wilson gave Palmer to end the, that crisis. Whether or not Hoover will authorize it is yet to be seen, however. I can't go back on my promise that, promises. Nope, can't do it. So now that we've authorized the raids, we need to expand the FBI. Expand. And then do something with, regarding the riot. So, very good. And then do the focus to reassure the establishment. Okay. So after this, reassure the establishment. The Republican Party has been the centerpiece of American politics since the Civil War. Many of the radicals across the country wish to tear it apart and see this glorious union shattered. However, there are ways to solve this problem. Now comes the question, how will the President Hoover solve this problem? So J. Edgar Hoover's new FBI, when Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover, of course, was authorized to do whatever needed to be done to end a current crisis, many within the executive branch noticed the lack of resources the FBI was suffering from. Even more noticeable was the lack of any real power to get, go after criminals. The director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, has proposed a massive expansion of the FBI, including hiring more agents, procuring more office buildings, and in general finding more power to go after the criminals and solve the crisis. President Hoover is now left with a choice to either accept Hoover's request and expand his increasingly powerful organization or to deny the request and to make with the resources he has right now. Deny it. 
Absolute deny it. Embolden FBI. Ah, yes. That's kind of like a secret police. It literally is a secret police. Ah, oh, you gotta love the FBI, right? They totally won't be corrupt at all. Alright, so I, I know I keep going back to this, and I'm sure you're tired of me clicking on this, but... So, we'll do the raid, and we'll expand the FBI, we gotta wait for them, and then whoever hopefully will stay with us. And then hopefully f figure out what a vacuum is by the end of the first 100 days. The first 100 days of his presidency are said to be the period when Hubert Hoover will put the country back on track. Such promises are important for any president, however. With everything going on, little has been achieved by President Hoover, with the riots, workers' strikes, and paramilitaries running around and scaring politicians. Hoover has achieved more than he had had in his previous term with the cooperation of Senate and House Democrats. While the Lincoln Memorial, however, Hoover was informed that the FBI caught a 20-year-old would-be assassin that has been tied to the old Democratic Party. It was a close call. Older men declare war, but it is the youth that must fight and die. Yes, that is quite true. So then after this focus, or reassuring the establishment, then we'll go on the right side. And then we have to choose either going home rule or go a hardline route. So, uh, not bad. Are we building up yet? Nope. We still have 1.3 million manpower, which is not bad. It feels weird having not America collapse yet. So that'd be already hard crisis. It's only May 37. I need to play as the Far Eastern Republic of Transamur. I've tried it before, but, oh well. Dealing with the rise, ever since Hoover's victory in 36, the city of D.C., along with many other large cities across America, have faced major riots. In dealing with this problem, however, Hoover now has a choice of what resources he will use to solve this problem. I'm sure things will soon calm down, right? Job for the police, let MacArthur restore order in D.C.? This is a job for the police. I don't trust MacArthur. I do a little bit, but... And Bryce Knox is economics. During his tenure as part owner of the Chicago Daily News, Frank Knox was critical of wasteful government spending of the Hoover administration, along with the proposed plans of those by radicals across the country. Now as VP, Knox has taken command of the economic policy of the Hoover administration. His focus is on balancing the federal budget along with relieving both individuals and businesses of the excessive burdens of taxation. More market liberalism, please, and a little bit more stability, yes, yes. And now restoring order to the U.S.? Now that the order has been returned to Washington, D.C., the largest question we have faced concerns the restoration of order to the rest of the country. Hoover has two options. On one hand, Frank Knox and the Republican establishment are pushing for Hoover to adopt the strategy and message that the Republicans adopted the Republican National Convention, which call for a meeting with the radical elements of the U.S. and granting them the ability to govern their own territories for now. Howard Douglas MacArthur and J. Edgar Hoover have proposed that Hoover don't adopt the message and strategy that Garner was proposing during the Democratic National Convention, which call for going after the radical elements in the U.S. and bringing the said radicals to heel. Given our past president, the path for Hoover is cleared, and he will embrace the establishment's home rule plan. And we got a balanced budget, of course. Knox has made a name for himself as a crusading politician over the past decade, wishing to reform the federal government with his ideas about economics. His first plan is to establish <clears throat> or balance the federal budget, which would help deal with years of wasteful spending on the part of Herbert Hoover, but now the question remains, how will he do that? I think in our time, didn't Herbert Hoover try to, like, he started some, you could, I guess, call welfare programs, but, like, if I remember correctly, he tried to help out against help the crisis, you know, with that stuff. But he also wanted to balance the budget a whole lot too, if I remember correctly. So didn't work out for him. Sometimes you got to go radical spending. Sometimes the Hoover announces negotiations. After his re-election, Hoover had to deal with the riots not only in Washington but also across the rest of the U.S. Having now dealt with the riots in D.C., Hoover. <clears throat> has announced that his next priority as president is to end the most recent strike launched by the SBA. To achieve this, he has sent an invitation to Big Bill Haywood to sit down in Chicago and negotiate a deal. Haywood holds a firm grip over the IWW and AFL, who make up the bulk of the general strikers. Secretary MacArthur, along with many other members of the cabinet, are opposed to the talks and see any negotiations as political suicide. Regardless, the president and his top negotiator, Charles Curtis, are determined. I won't make Cleveland's mistake. Hopefully not. Hopefully, hopefully not. And balance the budget. House of Un-American Activities? Oh, let's see. Home Rule Plan in Texas? Herbert Hoover has introduced a so-called Home Rule Plan to increase autonomy to the states and allow for greater self-governance. Implementing this across the nation has led to unexpected side effect, regional separatism growing across the nation, notably in Texas, where the secessionist camp has surged in popularity. The Texan secessionists view America as a nation on its deathbed, and the only way for Texas to survive is to go it alone. Well, there's no legal press process for succession. The collapse of law and order in the U.S. would negate any illegal means of having to leaving the Union for Texas. What's the worst that can happen? Let's not light that fire again. No, 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 not today. Not today. Maybe some other day. But Haywood accepts the invitation. Big Bill Haywood has sent the word to the government that he has accepted the invitation to negotiate an FBI intelligence file, and Haywood indicates that he and other SBA leaders were worried that the right wing would defect if outright turned it down, meaning that he is less than thrilled to be present, but must make at least a show of good, quasi-goodwill. While preparations are being made in Chicago to heighten security, members of the President's cabinet, as well as General Douglas MacArthur, have expressed his serious misgivings at the entire endeavor. They say he's putting his life in jeopardy, but for now, they will wait to see what comes of the meeting. 
Maybe the Republic will survive? Aw, oh, but survival seems a little boring. Alright, so, negotiations begin, of course. Hoover gave a speech stating his plan before the negotiations. And while there were very few cheers, the speech did alleviate fears. He noted that with these negotiations, we continue the great American tradition of achieving peace through compromise, progress through understanding, and democracy through mutual agreement. Many of our efforts today fulfill the spirit of the Constitution and preserve the liberty for all Americans. President Hoover and Big Bill Haywood have sat down for the historic meeting in Chicago midway through the negotiations. Word arrived that both Huey Long and upon hearing of Long's request, William H. Murray have demanded to be present at the negotiations despite our diplomats already telling them that they would be seen after Haywood. Their presence will undoubtedly make negotiations more difficult, possibly scuttling them entirely, but refusing could incite the AFP and ODP to, launch it to such a degree as to make success in Chicago worthless. Even Haywood himself seems to want them to be present, if only to be certain that Hoover will tell them all the same thing without giving the others too much. Oh, allow them to participate. Oh, let's see. Um, is this in here at all? So, do research establishment, start the right side of the tree. Two? Okay, so, oh, so if you want to go down the home rule, I believe that Dune went down hard line. So invite Haywood, deny them, as long as you don't expand it, as long as you expanded the FBI, they will be killed. Okay, so they have no business here. Agree to all of the demands. I'm glad, I was waiting to see if we had to do a home rule or hard line. I'm glad I looked at this thing, because uh, it doesn't tell you, so. We got some proven machine tools, very nice, very nice. Let's grab some of this, too. So, I want to go the home rule routes. Our last choice. With Hoover, Knox and Curtis not allowing Long and Murray at the Chicago negotiations, the FBI have been all alerted that both Long and Murray are going to condemn Hoover and the D.C. establishment, but not listening to their desire for autonomy similar to the FBI. Well, Hoover is off in Chicago, the choice comes to MacArthur on what to do with the information. Order of the death. Those darn fools get what he deserves. I can't believe we're literally assassinating political opponents. The Atlanta Massacre. While preparing to speak to a crowd in Atlanta, former presidential candidate William Murray was shot and killed along with several of his supporters by an unknown assailant. The FBI, along with the Hoover administration, have sent agents down to hunt down these assailants and help both the ODP and the governor of Georgia, Eugene Talmage, deal with the ensuing chaos. With the death of Alafafa Bill, along with Ford's assistance of the Hoover administration, the ODP has begun to tear itself apart, and as such, the th threat of revolt has been neutralized. neutralized. Send consolences to the family of Murray. Honestly, if you massacre, if you murder someone like that, I mean, it's kind of a murder. In my opinion, like, that could happen, or it could also really radicalize even more people and just break away immediately. So, I mean, it depends if there's a second, a very strong cult of personality around the second person in command, but, eh, whatever. Alright, and then they'll be killed. And then, agree to all of Haywood's demands. The New Orleans Massacre. How could you kill Huey Long? While exiting the HQ of the AFP in New Orleans, former presidential candidate Big Daddy Huey Long was shot and killed along with several other supporters by an unknown assailant. Uh, it's kind of the same, actually the same thing. So, AFP and the Louisiana Governor Earl Long has helped restore order. So, with the death of the Kingfish, the AFP is already beginning to tear itself apart and as such, the threat of revolt has been neutralized. That, that sucks, man. Huey Long, why? Alright. And now, agree to everything and don't Agree to all demands, and don't disarm the militias. A compromise achieved. The Home Rule Act of 37 is passed, with the federal government agreeing to give far more autonomy to the SBA states in terms of the economic and social policies in return for dramatically reversing their militia recruitment programs. They must also cease their current strikes, rights, party recruitment in other areas of the country, and most of all, any overtly aggressive action against us. The socialists are now currently transitioning Chicago to Detroit to semi-syndical systems, where workers are universally unionized and own shares of production. While many within the cabinet do not like giving them control even to this degree, this level of decentralization diffuses the radicals while allowing us to focus on the West and East, regions where the federal government is still most influential. Further, it has given us a chance to eliminate their threat on a national level while giving each major constituency what they want. America's safety through compromise? You just murdered two other people. That, I wouldn't call that, that's a little bit of a compromise, but that, you just murdered two people, man. <laughs> well, it is what it is, I guess. So now we agree to all demands, and don't disarm the militia. Or you can invite them. Oh wait, or invite those two, then Haywood demands reforms, then funding, and then Murray proposing a thing. Radicals get upset. Uh, accept everything and don't force the militias to disarm you while avoid civil war. Don't disarm the militias, okay. Civility returns to the US of A. The U.S. of A. has been in a worsening political crisis for years, however, not anymore. President Hoover, 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 seeing the situation, has been able to deal with the cynicalists of the Socialist Party, the populists of the American First Party, and the nativists of the old Democratic Party. This expert political maneuvering has saved millions of lives, both those who are living and those who have yet to be born. Annihilation has been born by killing off two opposing members. Jesus Christ, you should have just killed off Big Bill Haywood, too, then. I don't know if I like this path, then. Formation of the Whack. 
It has been proposed that the Congress create a committee dedicated to dealing with subversive elements within our society. Those that fought against the government, that this committee should be known as the House of Un-American Activities Committee and be dedicated to stamping out traitors to America. However, some within the government question its reach and regard it as being unconstitutional. What shall Congress do? Form the committee? Uh, what are we? Are we social democracy? No, we are market liberals, so... Progressive party? Um... I mean, it seems like we're going to make it anyway, so... Let's form the committee. So I guess just don't disarm the militias and we'll be okay. Alright! So I guess we avoided the American Civil War. Like, in Castle Redux, there's a lot of different ways you can avoid the American Civil War. So... It is. The delegation says unilaterally to restore British rights. If you want to buy that, please grant it. And we aren't even consulted. Who needed political power? Who needed it? That's how you save the country. By murdering opposition and agreeing with one side. Cool. Alright, 37, 37, 37. Sure, why not? Breaking the Minutemen and Clan. Without the threat of the SBA's revolt, we are now free to focus on the other factions. The clan is a shadow of its former self without the ODP, and the Minutemen and AFP are disorganized with the death of the Kingfish. The time has come to break up these factions to the best of our ability. With a compromise allowing the unions to establish their own econ economics in the Red Belt, we're unlikely to hear any anger towards the federal government in breaking up these two groups. Hoover has the all clear. Oh, that's cool. We okay, so we, we removed the Invisible Empire, uh, which was Hoover reveals Dust Bowl, military support Black Monday. Okay, so that's good to get rid of that. That's very good to get rid of that. And the political crisis. We still have the depression. But don't talk. Wait, let's not talk about that. The Dust Bowl, of course. Wait, wait. Political crisis. Black Monday. Wait. I don't see a political crisis, but whatever. Um, Alright. And I guess every man a pot? Every man a chicken? Let's get the pot first. Well, industrial America is still bankrupt, but it's the farms across America that must deal with the aftermath of the Dust Bowl and the collapse of the farming industry. Radicals across the U.S. of A. are using this crisis to promise everything from small changes in how our economy is done all the way to the abolishment of the capitalist system itself. So, this question is how to bring both our people in America back from the brink. And we'll have to deal with the Great Depression, of course, but hey, that's okay. Can we build anything yet? God dang it, we can't. At least we're training ships. Because that's our only consolation prize here. Uh, going about Amelia Earhart circumnavigating the globe. Please go ahead. Quite the achievement. Alright, at least they made it this time. Anything here? More destroyers? Throw them on here. Because I guess, technically, we'll probably just join the Entente. Because I'm... Depending on how fast this goes, I might just join the second, uh, Valkrieg. So, we'll see. Actually, can we send volunteers? <gasps> we can get involved. How many can we send? Please, someone can send... One! Oh, God, that's not good. Um... These guys are 18 come with. Let's send the Indian head. Let's get involved, boys! We're getting involved! Oh, I love conflict in the morning. Well, I guess technically for me it's the afternoon. But maybe for you it's the morning, so happy morning. Um, actually, uh, go duplicate that. Do we have any light, lighter bombers? One and two. So, actually, I'm going to do this then. Oh, wait, are you light? Oh, you're cast. Okay. You know what? Screw it. Just take these guys off. Just strip them. We like it when they strip. Let's get a lot of XP, boys. America's coming back. Even though we still have a Great Depression. Don't don't question that, though. Who cares about the Great Depression when you got a lot of planes to send? And we're barely making any a week. We got a balanced budget, though. Dispersed industry is very nice. All right, it is still 37, my friends. Uh, let's grab that. Grumman. Why not? All right, very good. Are we? Oh, yes, we are. We're doing a nice amount of damage. More than four is always good. And we got one whole division. Hopefully, we can make some guns for these guys because I don't want to lose too many guns. Um, Chaffee, Harding, sure. Cha sure, why not Harding? Craig? Yeah, why not? Because we can. I like someone is kind of sucking around here. But too bad they got more reinforcements, so that sucks. Um, actually, you guys come down here first. I kind of wish we sent the tank division instead now, but whatever. Malin Craig? be offensive. Let me go throw a planner too. All right, my friends, time to get every man a pot. We like we like pot here. Uh, every man a chicken, or every pot a chicken. In the 1920 election, Herbert Hoover promised Americans a chicken in every pot and two cartridges in every garage. For the past few terms, this wish has not come to fruition. And now, as the most hated man in America, he will have to answer how every pot will get a chicken. Well, we'll just tax the crap out of people and give the people then some chicken. That's how we do it. Scavenger, why not? I wanted it. Oh, there we go. One v one. We should be able to win, right? They, they're probably too big. Sovereignists. Do, do, sovereignists. What's going on down here? There's Goldring. Pierre Reckmans. I want 
My Hadrish. Robert Leak. <gasps> Reinhard! Oh, the Belgrade Pack. Nah, no one cares about that in America right now. Can we actually win here at the fourth Balkan War? How many more Balkan Wars are you guys going to have? Lots of them. Hold for now. Hold for now. That's since they're attacking. And now we're going to attack them back. Oh, yes, please. Beat the crap out of them. We aren't really... Oh, we're making a few guns. Actually, we can use more artillery here. You know what? This infantry division, I'm going to convert you to... Let's duplicate that. 20s, Artie. Just make sure that it's actually been made. And convert you to Artie. I mean, I believe in a lot of Artie. And I'm going to convert you... Maybe if you win the thing. So, dealing with the Depression. The Great Depression can be felt as far back as 1925, but when the stock market crash of 28 occurred, the crisis was clear for everyone to sleep. And Hoover spent the first entire term attempting to, uh, every policy he could think of to try and solve the crisis. However, when his 32 victory came in the House of Representatives made his mandate as president far weaker, it was clear he needed to do better. Hoover has once again come back to try and solve this crisis with Knox's help. The budget has been balanced. However, several options now lay before Hoover with a clean slate economy. McNary and the Progressive Caucus are calling for Hoover to listen to them and once more continue economic interventionism. Meanwhile, the liberals of the Republican Democrat Party are advocating a similar stance to the Progressives, but to a far less, less, lesser degree. Along with attempting to maintain the balanced budget, establishment Republicans like Charles Curtis are advising Hoover to embrace the idea of a work-sharing work plan, which would compensate Americans for the hours lost via partial unemployment subsidy. And the last option on Hoover's desk is performing austerity measures that the conservative of Democrats and Republicans have pushed for. This would mean more cuts on the budget to show businesses that we live in a fiscally responsible nation. Push forward a progressive economic intervention? Um. Embrace land and the liberals' plan. More social liberalism. Continue forward the work sharing plan to get more market liberalism. Embrace the Democrats' austerity measures. Well, honestly, like, we're very, like, market liberal, and I want to keep going that way for now, so I think that would be okay. If I. I think Quentin Roosevelt is. Or was it. Olsen, they're social democrats, I think. So we'll do. Like, we'll be progressive when we get when it plays them, but not for right now. I don't think so. I mean, he's market liberal, so I want to go with the work sharing plan. We get more political power. We lose monthly population. Consumer goods gets re hit extraordinarily hard. Forty percent. Jesus Christ. Stability goes up. Less construction speed for. Oh, it's all for a year. Okay. Jesus Christ. But then again, we already didn't have a city, so what difference does it make really? Indo Chinese Revolt C succeeds. Oh, they threw more guys in there too. Look at that. Uh, you're not actually technically all the way up there. Oh, we can send more casts. Oh, when in doubt, let the American bombers ring on out. Oh, baby, yes. And then, Hoover's and Spannung. Since the end of the Velo Creek, the virus of the Germans of Upper Powers pushed American industries out of Europe. Because of this, the American relationship with the Kaiserreich is extremely tense. However, Hoover and Knox can now make overtures to Germany in an attempt to get American access to the European market. We get, enter non-aggression pact with them. Cool. Come on, gun those boys down. Gun, gun, gun. We need more guns. So right now we are... Oh, we're doing okay in artillery. Not great. Oh, would you look at that. Very nice. Convert yourselves. I want I want you to smack the crap out of enemies. We need four more artillery pieces. That's fine. Go and help out if you can. Only 200. Five and a half damage. Nine. Oh, that's nice. Oh, now, oh, oh it's 13 there for just a second there. Oh, 10? Nice. Ah, just overwhelming air superiority. Dealing with the Dust Bowl, though? Oh, we need to do that. For the most of the 30s, the entirety of the Great Plains have been dealing with the Dust Bowl, while the Hoover administration has had some success in taking, tackling the problem. However, dealing with the crisis has been a failure that this administration has been seen by the public as one of Hoover's biggest failures. However, Hoover has a chance to try and fix the problem. Now that Knox pushed forward with his balanced budget, the Democrat in the House and Senate pushed for the more rural investments to these devastated plain states. The establishment and conservative Republicans are pushing for more tariffs to protect both our farmers and workers just like what has been done before. The liberal Republicans are calling for Hoover to embrace a competition of free, uh, free trade, which they believe won't solve a problem with the Dust Bowl, would help lower costs for the food in America and help Americans overall. And Senator McNary, in which his plan would implement higher domestic prices for local farm products in order to help our farmers. Um, lowering tariffs probably would be the best thing to do, maybe, but promote free trade. Social liberal. New tariffs. Uh, embrace the Democrats... Rural investment. Wait. I don't think... Hmm. Market liberals. Um. Doesn't that just mean, like, you want to remove any barriers to, like, free trade, basically, and stuff like that? Get minimal... I, I could be wrong here. Market liberalism is, like, is like, minimizing government intervention in the market. So, do tariffs actually... I don't, I don't know. I'm probably wrong about that, but... Tariffs don't seem like the right thing to protect our farmers. But I want more market liberalism, so... 46% market liberal, so be it. Nah, 
Nice. Oh, oh, can we actually win there? I don't know. Let's see. Indian head division. Looking pretty already focused. But the 37 World Series we won't but that was great. Play ball. So what's next? Oh, Hoover's and Spandum. That's right. Cool. For now, I'm just going to hang out and do something like this. Enjoy the coast, guys. I want you to all enjoy the coast. Obviously, we don't have a very large military, but that's why we're at war right now. I would, you know what? I don't mind making Marines, but they're a little bit too small for us to really make now. Motorized are not bad either. Infantry divisions are okay. I don't want to hurt a gun amount right now, so... Eventually, I want to make 40 combo with divisions. These guys are actually really good at making. Let's make at least one of these guys going forward, so... That'd be pretty good. Heavy armor. I'm not going to use heavy armor for this campaign. Cavalry. I'm going to actually say do this before we forget about this. Garrisons. Cool. No, and there you go. A local autonomy, my friends. And... Um, you know, just duplicate this. But in the meantime, before we do that, I'm actually going to throw this stuff on here, too. Um, which one do we want? Uh, save it for 10 for now. How much, how many light tanks do we have? We have none. Okay. Support equipment? We have none. Okay, then. Uh, that's not good. Huh. <laughs> okay. You know what? Screw it. You know, we're going to wait that. We'll wait to do that later. That's fine. Ford and Hearst attack Hoover. While Ford was brought into, uh, in originally devised Hoover on the economy during the 36th campaign, times have changed and Ford has turned against the president. In fact, Hoover's recent decisions on the economy have caused Hoover's former ally to call him out. With Ford's attack on Hoover, Hearst's media empires also begin to attack the Hoover presidency. Can they finally shut the crap up? Maybe. House of Vote American Activities? Sure, why not? For the longest time, Hoover's left radicals run across America. However, uh... American Republicans and Democrats in the House of Representatives finally had enough, and under the leadership of Republican J. Parnell Thomas, they may have done something about it. Along with the support of the Democrat colleagues such as Martin Dyes Jr., these Republicans have begun to investigate what they and the committee see as radicals across America, investigating the SBA, ODP, and AFP. Some of the more fervent supporters of Thomas are calling for an investigation of both the military and Hollywood as well. Oh, we're going to lose a lot of political power. But who needed PP, right? We don't believe in PP here. I just hope you're shelling the crap out of these anarchists. I want just so much soft attack. Just gun them all down. And we are going superior fire power, if you didn't know so. Um, let's get that, because we could use that, definitely. Oh, the, the, the Spanish horses have armor. Look at that. Come on, keep grinding them down, baby boy. And we currently get how much every day? 0.89? That's not too bad, actually. 0.89 is not too bad. We have a positive amount of already still, which is delicious. Keep going up. We're from Army Exercises, from Dwight D. Eisenhower, from Art War Department Expanded. Very nice. It definitely helps having ground support here. Then again, I mean, it would help if we actually were using that in this area here. So, there you go. Now we should actually be able to win, right? Because most of the area here that we're covering has already been liberated, so. Hang out for now, and then I guess House of Un-American Activities. Followed up by investigate the ODP. The split of the Democratic Party was not as severe in the beginning as the Republicans broke with the progressive wing of their own party, so it evened out. However, that change has over the time, and more of the solid South broke with the mainstream Democrat Party and began running their own candidates. These actions came to hurt the mainstream Democrat Party in the same way the 1912 election destroyed their rivals. While this would not have been a problem normally, the expansion of the ODP to areas outside the solid South has been a worrying development. It's worse, they have... We have seen clan activity spread further outside the solid south in much larger numbers than, they, than we've ever seen before. The time has come to investigate both the ODP and the Ku Klux Klan. The Cool Kids Club. <laughs> Alright, boys, you shelling the crap out of them. Uh, Buena Ventura, Doruti. Boy, you're going to get shelled the crap out of yourself. Alright, sounds good to us. Alright, what's next? Oh, this is fuel storage. We might want to get more rubber eventually. Uh, we're missing some... Oh, uh, we could probably, honestly use some of this stuff. But do we have any factories to use? Nope. So much for trying to help out, build a bigger navy. No one will keep making more of these destroyers. Let's keep training, boys. Keep training. Alright. How's it looking over here? That's a small Bulgaria and Illyria. You look like you're almost surrounded by Serbia. But they ain't. Not yet. Not yet. Eastern Sumeria. Alright, alright. Boys, are you attacking them without relent? The Shirokoi Socialisti takes power. Probably the socialist group, right? Yeah. Very cool, very cool. 
Well, Bulgarian is going to do Bulgarian things. Oh, no, they are social democrats. They're not socialists. They're Boris. Oh, Harding. Oh, he's becoming Hills 5, an infantry leader. Oh, hello. Interesting. Evo Pilar. Ethnic clashes. I love ethnic clashes. Fighting for Illyria. That's pretty good. Croatian offices, huh? United Officer Corps, huh? So, oh, no one's liking the Austrians here. Which is, you know, it's, they're Austrians. Wow, we are slowly losing here. Are we still losing here? Oh, we're actually not attacking in the area here. Now you should be able to win, right? Or not. Oh, please don't encircle us, you pieces of garbage tanks. Oh, if we can actually win here, that'd be great. But now they're actually attacking us here, too. Oh, hold first, hold first, hold first. Harding's getting the crap beaten out of him. Oh, yeah, look at that. Are they, are they force attacking? No, they're not. Okay. The Thomas Committee. The House of Un-American Activities are whack. As a new institution that was pushed forward by conservative Republicans and... Democrats. Huak claims legacy from the Overman Committee that was used during the Wilson administration to investigate some German but mostly Bolshevik and syndicalist elements in the U.S. The House of Un-American Activities has been organized to investigate alleged disloyalty and subversive activities on the part of private citizens, public employees, and those organizations suspected of foreign syndicalist ties. The first chairman of this committee will be the New Jersey Republican J. Parnell Thomas with assistance from famed Democrat Martin Dyes, or Dees. Hopefully we can get to the bottom of this. Hey, I like that. And then we're going to investigate the SBA. The Socialist Party of America was founded in 1901, but during the Wilson and Palmer administration between 1912 and 28, the country saw massive political repression of the SBA along with other socialist groups, however. With Hoover's first term, the calm, he calmed tensions with the SBA. When the SBA began to evolve into the CSA and participate as a major part of it, this coalition of trade unions across the Midwest began to use political violence for their own ends. Such violence increasingly occurred between the members of the CSA and Klan and the old Democratic Party. The failure of the SBA in 1932 led to election violence across the Midwest between members of the SBA and beers other political parties from the old Democrat Party members all the way to members of the Progressive Party. With the SBA's second defeat now in the 1936 election, we've been seeing massive riots across the Midwest and various strikes occurring. The violence of the CSA has led questions about the continued existence of that organization in statehood for Alaska. Alaska's proposed to, to Congress being admitted to the U.S. of A. as a state. Should Alaska be admitted as a state with that all it entails or should it remain a territory for now? Never, it will never become a state. Never in their wildest years. Bold the dam has been completed. This morning I came, I saw, and I was conquered. As everyone who would be sees for the first time this great feat of mankind. Ten years ago, the place where I, we gathered was a sparse, forbidding desert. In the bottom of a gloomy canyon, whose precipitous walls rose to a height of more than a thousand feet, flowed a turbulent, dangerous river. The mountains on either side of the canyon were difficult to have access, with neither road nor trail, and the rocks were protected by neither trees nor grass from the blazing heat of the sun. The title or the site of Boulder City was a cactus-covered waste, a transformation brought here in these, these years the 20th century marvel. Thus begins the President's speech dedicating the creation of Boulder Dam that has finally been completed today. On behalf of the nation, to say to you, well done. And the Thomas Committee investigates the ODP and Stevenson. He's got a, a chunky boy. Look at that butt chin. The House of Un-American Activities began to investigate the ODP party. And are using D.C. Stevenson as a poster child for the investigation. J. Edgar Hoover has alerted Parnell Thomas and the whack that he has evidence of the Indiana clan leader D.C. Stevenson's corruption, which includes him in a circle engaging in alcoholism, drugs, intimidation, relations with minors, oh boy, sexual assault, and murder. The committee's conclusion is, give him a promotion. Oh no, arrest him. Arrest him and use him to discredit the ODP as a party. Um, arrest him and use him to go after, and use him to go after the arrest of ODP, uh, ODP leadership. That seems like that would be one of the best things to do. We could just arrest him, discredit them, go after the rest of the party. And best get the AFP. The America First Party is a syncretic populist party that spans from Louisiana across the prairie states and across as wide of an ideological spectrum as well. This party has taken members from Democrats, Republicans, and Progressives. The party is a very militant wing along with a militia group commonly known as the Minutemen. These Minutemen have engaged in various battles both against the Klan and CSA card carriers, but their more extreme language, visions of reform, and violent militia actively have called the entire party into question. The Thomas Committee will begin the hearings with members of the party. I guess we're going to go straight on in. Keep beating the crap out of them. You're doing a great job. Ah, oh, never enough gunning down our enemies. Just gun them down, man. Just, just go burr, 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 baby. Make us feel alive and American like. Oh, they're attacking us. They, uh, their battalions are not very good. These Indian head division men are very, very bueno, though. 
Oh, we do have two Spanish divisions here helping us, holding out, so. On Darius to join the Anti-Revolutionary Alliance, so be it. All right, not bad. El Salvador doing an okay job, too. The town's committing best to the SPA and Foster. The House of Un-American Activities began using, or began to investigate the Socialist Party of an American, of America, and are using William Z. Foster as opposed to child for this investigation for over two decades. Foster has been on the side of the U.S. government and in support of labor strikes all throughout the Wilson and Palmer administrations to support for the SPA. J. Edgar Hoover has delivered the evidence to the Huac, and Parnell Thomas tying Foster to the Communist state which is in control of France and direct ties to the Marxist movement that exists in that state. The committee's com conclusion is arrest Foster. Arrest Foster and use him to discredit the SPA as a party. Arrest Foster and use him to go after and arrest the SPA leadership. Who needs stability? Because we already have 100%. Investigate Hollywood? Um, I'll do this one. Investigate them. Oh, let's do Hollywood first. Well, Hollywood is a very Republican institution. It was perhaps necessary to launch an investigation into the conduct to determine the strength of traitors' facts within the film industry. Many within the Democratic Party and the conservative wing of the Republican Party have grown suspicious of Hollywood due to the amount of movies produced over the past decade. They appear very sympathetic to pro Marx or pro syndicalist thought. Oh, we killed them off. Look at that. Nice. Good job, guys. Nice job. They're a bunch of militia people. You can get rid of them. All right. 46 army XP. 20s arties. Uh, since we're here, anyways, do we have any more support equipment? No, we do not. So there's no point throwing anything else on, which does have a big old sucko moment. But let's improve the guys. We can improve immediately in the field. Thank you very much. All right. Not bad. Not bad. I guess you guys could help here if you really wanted to. Oh, they threw in a third division, too. That's not good. But we're still doing okay. How strong are these guys right now, actually? That guy looked very weird. Hold on. Oh, they're out of manpower. Gil Robes Quinones. Quinones. Oh, Absolutica Fracticia in Bulgaria. Well, Bulgaria's falling apart. But I wouldn't want my Bulgaria any other way. The fall of Madrid. Down. Whoa. Do you what the heck? The great Caucasian state. Why did you go to war with them? You have a nice hat though. I like that. Um there, did you piss off everybody? What's going on here? The Reichspact Oh, you went to war with these guys, okay. And Russia Anastasia the first. Alright, well they have incompetent leadership down there, I guess. Oh, they threw in some tanks, that's not good. Yeah, they're throwing in tanks, that's not good. That's not really not good. The French are showing up though. Hoover's like a missy. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh, the tanks are trying to fight us, too. Look at that. We can't pierce them. We do have air superiority, but we... Oh, they threw in the Mexicans, or is it those Italians? The House of Un-American Activities has begun to investigate the American First Party, using William Dudley Pelly as a post job for the investigation. While well, a minor figure within the broader po uh, populist movement in the U.S., uh, it is a, the government's best chance of nabbing an American firster. J. Edgar Hoover has delivered evidence of J. Parnell Thomas and Huac tying Pelly to the imperial government German. Imperial German government, hoping to keep the U.S. out of their affairs and destabilize the U.S. government. Members of the committee are going after Pelley with high treason and sedition charges. The conclusion of the artillery is, arrest them. We're going to do everything else and like normal, and we're going to lose a lot more stability. And then investigate the military. The suspicions between the U.S. federal government and the military have existed since the start of Hoover's second term. Some members of the House of Un-American Activities have begun to question the motives of the heads of the Department of the Interior, Douglas MacArthur, and the military overall. This could only go very, very well for us. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Cuba asked to buy aircraft. Like its own aircraft, Cuba has requested to purchase a small share of our military's nation, ma ma nation's military production for the month in order to produce a handful of fair aircraft. Well, such deals are not unprecedented. Perhaps it's not worth harming your own production for Cuba's sake. Well, that's all right. Follow me. There you go. Not bad. Pretty good. Pretty good. And don't let him in. No, 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 no. Um. Wait. What the heck? Wait. El Salvador wants our help against Nicaragua. Oh, I don't want I don't want to lose that much stability, man. I know we got a lot already, but still. Screw it. I guess we're going in, boys. You find and sink everything they got. Nicaragua, you going to die now. You done made me lose a whole lot of things here. But what are we supposed to do? Our allies are these guys. Well, they're not even our allies. Uh, I guess we have to invade manually then. Ooh, can you go from take you? You three come from here. God dang it! If I have to get down here and invade you guys, so be it. But oh well. You know what? If that's the case, I'm going to, have to you know take all your territory away from you then. 
and then one, two. It's fine, Guatemala. Whatever. There you go. Take that off. God dang it, I wanted to help out those guys over there. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. We will vote with care. Um, really? The Russian Empire? The pretend autocrats. Everything's on fire over there. Are they in their own faction yet? Oh, Eurasian block. That's not good. Uh, no votes. Vote abstentions. I want to see how everyone else voted, but... I don't trust some Russians. I'll say no. You know what? I'm going to say... I'm going to abstain. Screw it. One person said yes. No people... Two people said no. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Did not plan on going. I've never gone to war with Nicaragua at this time. Never, ever, ever, ever have I ever done this. It's alright, though. Of course, then again, I could have just asked for military access. Yeah, actually, I would have been a lot better. Yeah, let's probably do that instead. They don't even need us. Why did you call us in then? The vote fails. In the most recent vote on legation councils fell by a small narrow margin. It cannot be proposed again. Interesting. Go suck a fat one, Russia. I don't know why I'm so against Russia right now, but don't ask. Oh, uh, Austria. You're really having a hard time, aren't you, son? Brendel, huh? Ah, uh, it's v v kind of rare to see a generic focus tree in Kaiser Redux, but whatever. Yeah, that's probably the smart thing to do. Cuban aircraft sales gone. Oh, that sucks. Go in, boys. Teach these Nicaraguans a lesson. Republicans weak win Greek referendum. All right, so be it. If I have to get involved, I swear to God, I'm taking all the states. I don't care. I'm taking them all. I will. Do not want to come back down here. Do not make me come back down here. I swear to God. You will be a banana republic whether you like it or not. All right, let's get back down here. Nice. Nice, not bad. We lose some stability, but whatever. Uh, fate of Nicaragua, what are we going to do? With the man, man, uh, Managua in our hands, we now control Nicaragua and are able to uh, decide what to do with those lands. Or, or, or actually, I'm, I'm fine with actually releasing a puppet this time. It's fine with me. I don't really care. Um... The Tom's Committee investigates Hollywood? In a shocking bit of news, the Thomas Committee has decided to investigate Hollywood and the various guilds that exist within it for syndicalist sympathies or broader sympathies to foreign governments. The leader of the committee, J. W. Par T J. Parnell Thomas, has shifted the focus massively to going after perceived syndicalist elements in the industry. Thomas is quoted as saying un uh, from the outset of these hearings, the fact is that the Committee on the Un-American Activities is investigating alleged communist art influence infiltration in the moving picture industry. It must not be considered interpreted as an attack on the industry itself, nor should our investigation be interpreted as an attack on the majority of persons associated with this great industry. Many people have begun to attack Thomas and Huak for the perceived attacks on the industry, with the screenwriters go coming out and saying the authoritarian tactics of the committee are a direct attack on American democracy. Go after the screenwriters committee and maintain the focus there. Go after communist art and syndicalist forces within Hollywood. Well, we're going to go full range, full on in. This is really destroying our credibility here. <laughs> Sorry, we're going to go full. I'm going to go, we're going extremist. We saved America, but at what cost? Good movies. Uh, we'll go with this one. There you go. Good luck, guys. All right, welcome back to Iberia. Um, actually, I might just send you guys over here instead. Patagonian Workers Front. All right, all right. Even the Japanese got their own ambitions. All right, all right. So after this one, we get some more stability and some more popularity of market liberalism, but whatever. Red flag, if you about that, please go ahead. And the Cozy Cottage. There we go. There are things in the world that cannot be brought about. There are mistakes that cannot be repaired, but there is one thing sure that loyalty and friendship are the most pre precious possessions a man can have. More stability, ideology, drift fence, more market liberalism, conservative, uh, social conservatism. Alright, alright. 
Go right on in, guys. Beat up these uh, militia folk. The International Division. They actually have some engineers, huh? That's better for them. We still haven't fixed the economy yet, but okay. Hoover's America. Hoover's legacy should be good to get rid of. Um, victory in the Civil War. We don't have any Civil War, so... Um, arm, we can do army reform debate, which we definitely probably need to do. Air Force debate, stuff about the Navy. Oh, we can do back in business. Actually, we won't try this one next. We do need more stability, though. Uh, we can do all this stuff, too. Immigration reform, pass, act, stuff like that. Um, hmm. Oh, is it this one, too? Beacon of Democracy. Okay. Democracy saved. Now it's time for the rightful party to rule. All right. We'll probably go with social liberals. Probably just straight up as much market liberalism as possible. Republicans. Oh, uh, have I done this one before? I remember I did the uh, one when I played as SPA, and I think did I do market liberals that time? Reduce subsidies, education campaign, tolerance campaign, naval expansionism. Maybe I might have done that one. I can't remember. You know, if you guys, you guys probably honestly remember better than I did. Is this exact same one as the SPA tree? Incentivize charity. Social gospel sounds like I've done that one before as well. Please let me know if I've done this one before. I think I have. Hollywood support. Let me know in the comments if I've done this one before, just because it seems like I've done it before. Especially the efficiency movement. I hope I hope it's not the exact same one as the SPA. SBA, PSA, PSA. SBA, PSA, they're all the same. The Times Committee investigates the military MacArthur. Well, Douglas MacArthur has been invalu invaluable to Hoover and to the executive branch in solving the crisis, many have called for investigation into his actions. Doubt has been thrown on the military for the perceived loyalties to the either clique faction or leaders and possible external powers. The two generals, the Times Committee, has decided to go after General Douglas MacArthur and along with Sm General Smedley Butler. Outside of these two, the committee is moving swiftly to investigate the military as a whole for treason along with allegiances to foreign powers and ideologies. Use MacArthur and Butler as an excuse to investigate the military further? Um. Nope. Sorry, that's one of the radical changes I'm going to choose for this one. Um, we could have gotten rid of him, I guess. I wonder if we could coup you after that. It'd be kind of funny if you could, but. We, at this point, we kind of. Oh, hello. The tribes break free of the Germans. Okay. Class of Middle Africa. Um, I just want to get, make sure we got a little bit more market liberalism. We didn't lose too much more stability, so. Yeah, it is what it is. Collapse of the Portuguese Empire. After this, it can't happen here. There are some principles that cannot be compromised. Either we shall have a society based on order, liberty, and the initiative of the individual, or we shall have a planned society that means dictation no matter what you call it or who does it. There's no halfway ground. They cannot be mixed, says Ho Herbert Hoover. Weekly stability goes up. Oh, that's really good to get. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe I should have done that other one. I should have got rid of MacArthur. Oopsie. Eh, whatever. It's fine. Oh, wow. Wow. What the heck just happened here? Wait, you're fighting the entire Entente now. Wait, why did you piss them all off? Uh, okay. Haiti seeks debt refinancing. As the ravages of Black Monday and the Great Depression wreak havoc on our own economy and the economies of our neighbors, many pleas for financial aid have reached our shores. Among the more interesting proposals come in from the Port au Prince, where the reigning Borno administration has ruled Haiti for some decades with American backing. They've asked us if we would be willing to sit down and renegotiate their long-standing debt to our government, seeking more agreeable terms and less extreme interest rates, as they seek to further rebuild their fledgling economy. Though we do not officially reign in, or officially reign in Haiti anymore, with the occupation ending in 35, their financial strength can prove still beneficial to our state and our lingering business and military interests left still on Hispaniola. How should we respond? Why should we care about the plight of some Haitians? Deny the request. Now, all of these sanctions of Haiti's to ever truly thrive. It's fine. More business, please. Hoover's America. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't want to get rid of MacArthur. I mean, he basically helped us and guaranteed we had a you know, strong backing in the military, so. What the heck, Guatemala? What the heck? Oh, you've earned my ire now. You're going to suck a fat one. I'm going to kill all you all off then. I did not expect I was going to go to war with Central America now. What even is this war? The Anti-Revolutionary Alliance, our finest ever, you want to that, please go ahead. Well, you know what? Screw these people. Get all the boys in here. And this cozy cottage. Nice. It can happen here. Yes, it can. This might be a bit too much for supplies and such, but whatever. 
Oh, Austria! Austria's just not having a good time, man. Did I throw? I did throw all the others here. That's good. Kill every last one of them off if you can. Force the attack. Force them to die. There goes Nicaragua. Oh no 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 no. All right, that's fine with us. All right, not bad. Austria declares war. Um, bro, what the heck is this? In the first episode, the Dona Adriboon, isolated by everyone else, has declared war upon the Third International. What? What? I'm mean, glad we broke through these guys, but still. What is this episode, man? I did not want to get involved in Central American affairs. I really didn't. Uh... Wait, did they peace out? No, they're, they're us. Okay, they're under us. That's good. Passive cylinder is very nice. It's still 38, of course. Um, bing bong boom. And I'll uh, grab some of this stuff too. Go screw yourself, Central Americans. At this point, I'm going to put you all under one administration. If we can. Uh, I'll double check that too, though. Go screw yourself, son. I just wanted to have a good time. But they said no, nah, and I'm like, too bad. I'm going to help out the Spanish because I've got no one else to help out now. All right, there you are, baby boys. Head on back to Hispaniola. Or, I guess not Hispaniola, but, you know, Spain. And, uh, I give them a uh, one-two buckle my shoe. The great New England Hurricane of 38, if you want to read about that, please go ahead. God save us all. Hey, we got some political power here. Uh, it can't happen here, but it can. 15% to... Do, 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 do. Pennsylvania Railroad. And Hoover's America. My country owes me nothing it gave me. As... <clears throat> oh, look at that. Uh, let him return. It gives, it gives every boy and girl a chance. It gave me school and independence of action. Opportunity for service and honor. Remove Hoover's legacy. Nice. America, democracy, reborn. Embolden the FBI. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if I trust the FBI there. Oh, and we got this stuff, too. Um, can I just form a central... Like, I might just form a central government. We'll see what happens. So, I guess after this... Um, we can do stuff over here. Back in business. The nation's seen some troubles, which means that it cannot act as an international power, but... Not as it deserves to be. But that has now changed. America is ready to re-enter the world stage. Uh, Air Force debate, of course. The Air Force having the funding necessary to expand it lacks the perceived direction and leadership needed to effectively advance. With numerous requests to fund research and competing minds says that they are key to victory in the skies. I think for this one, we'll probably go ahead and do whatever way we get bonus for superior firepower. Which I don't think I'm actually seeing here. Um, this is land doctrine. Which I do like. I, I like that we're not, like, forced to go down a certain route. Unlike the uh, CSA's route, which really sucks. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll let you guys decide. For this campaign, should we go add on Chaffee's reform plan? Which is kind of like, um, mobile warfare, but it's not explicitly mobile warfare. Tank competition. Should we go with Leslie McNair reform plan? Which is kind of like... I don't know. Toyota Artillery's Superior Firepower. We're already going down Superior Firepower, by the way, but should we do Mail and Craig's Reform Plan? Because I always... I, Superior Firepower is always used. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with choosing another route through this one. Or should we do MacArthur in Charge, which we don't really have to do, but you know, I like giving you guys some choice, so. Whoever gets the most votes and upvotes will win, probably. So, Selective Service. Um, there's a lot of stuff here, actually. And that takes a fight abroad as well, so that's actually really good to do, so. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff here. Cool. Uh, oh, and let me know. Ooh, actually, you know what? Maybe not. I might, No, I would probably go Mexican repatriation, because I want to go as much market liberal as possible. So we'll probably go with that one. Mexican repatriation. Denounce race hatred. We'll probably do the denounce race hatred, so that's probably the way we're going to go. New moralism. New interventionism. American imperialism. We can't do that one, so we got to figure out new moralism versus new interventionism. American isolationism. You know what? Let me know. Which one should we do? Should we do new moralism? 
versus new interventionism. Enter the fray, arts of democracy, the eagle and the lion, European recovery program, Persian influence, protective navy, the American century sounds amazing. So let me know, which one of these two? Moralism or interventionism? Of course, we have isolationism as well, or American anti-imperialism. So let me know which one y'all think we should do in the comments below. Cool. And I want to get through at least one more focus before we continue on. Alright, not bad. And you guys are still here with only a single division. Just kind of hanging out, having a good old time. Alright, for the third time in this campaign, Malin, I don't know what you're doing, but you got to come on back, son. Come on back. All right, there goes Iran. Iran, Iran. Iran, very far. Can you actually win there? Yeah, actually, you might be able to win, but you could get encircled there with two, which is really bad, but whatever. Things happen, right? Ah, uh, oh, Germans cancel. Back, okay, then. You know, just go in and retreat. It's probably best if you retreat, anyways. Yeah, go help them out. Why not? How many more days have we got this? Uh let's take a look here. Honduras. Um, I guess we'll just have to deliberate them all independently. I don't mind having a sing single like group under here, but it's all right. That kind of sucks that they decided to rise up against. Never mind. Whoa. Okay, I'm okay with this. I like this a lot. But the but then again, they're not even our puppet. Well, I guess the choice didn't even matter in the end. How typical. Nice, so. Harding's learning a lot, which is great. Alright, so you know what? I guess I'll end it here. I mean, I've already read a couple of these focuses. So, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll figure out what we're going to do with America in terms of foreign policy. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.